Alright, so today we're doing 97. We're doing something called using trigonometric identity. Identity in math would be something that equals itself. Like A equals A. Identity. What? Well, 9 equals 9? No, 9. That's an identity. Marie, can you tell me what an identity is? Or give me an example. One equals one. Excellent. Now I'll be even more creative. Okay. All right. So this is kind of where we're going. Only we're doing these with trigonometric ratios. So we're going to start out by looking at the core, this core concept. Um, there's some fundamental trigonometric identities. Reciprocal identity would be things like cosecant theta equals 1 over sine theta. These are equivalent to each other. They are reciprocals of each other. Um, secant theta equals 1 over cosine theta. Cotangent theta equals 1 over tangent theta. We should already know that. We just are giving it a name. <laughs> um, with this same concept, I'm going to add something else in there. What is cotangent theta multiplied by cotangent theta? I know what that is? Cotangent squared theta. You square the cotangent, not the theta part. But yes, yes, yes. Cotangent squared theta. Those are equal to each other. So using that thought, um, I can also write fundamental, um, the reciprocal identities as things like cotangent squared theta is equal to 1 over tangent squared theta. So you can write them as squares as well. You can write them as cubes as well. But all of these reciprocal identities work. There's two more identities which you should kind of know. Tangent and cotangent identities. We know that tangent is y over x. Yeah? So uh, sine of theta divided by cosine of theta is the same thing as y over x, which is the same thing as tangent of theta. So tangent of theta is the same thing as sine over cosine theta. Just like that, cotangent of theta is the same thing as cosine theta over sine theta, or x over y. Now these Pythagorean identities, I'm going to show you where we got these from. You know, um, this is the x value. This is the y value, this is r, and in the unit circle, r is 1. And we know the uh, Pythagorean, ident or Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, or 1. Except you also know that x is cosine, and you know that sine is y. So we can rewrite this as cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. So this is an identity. It is a Pythagorean identity. You'll recognize the Pythagorean identities because there might be a 1, and they're definitely squares. <coughs> now using that, I'm not going to show you the whole process, but there's more Pythagorean identities. If you really want to know how, I can show you one on one. You can visit. Um, but there's three Pythagorean identities using different um, trigonometric ratios. And you can take these identities and you can rearrange them any way you want. For example, this one right here is an equation. If I were to um, subtract sine squared theta from both sides, If I were to subtract sine squared theta from both sides, I would get cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. And this is another identity that is related to the original identity, but just looks different. 
So we can manipulate these three identities as well. We can move stuff around. So how are we going to use these? It's kind of related to when you were in geometry, the mid-proofs, it's kind of related. Where you just have to show every step. Okay? That's how I'm saying it's related. Remember the proofs, you have like show every single step. You can just jump to the end. We're not going to be writing reasons for all those steps. So we're not doing that part of the proof, but you do have to show every step. So this uh, says simplify each expression to a single trig function or a number. So our answer will be one single trig function or it will be a number. So I have secant theta, sine theta. What operation is in between these? Yeah, multiplication. And I see secant theta. I, I looked and I saw a, a vine over there and I thought it was interesting. <laughs> um, I have a tension deficit. Um, there isn't a right way of doing these. There's wrong ways of doing them, but there could be multiple right ways. So a suggestion would be to use these identities to substitute things. Um, try to make them all into sine and cosines rather than secant. That doesn't always work, but that's just a hint. So if I'm using that, I have sine here, but I have secant. I don't want secant. Can I change secant theta into something that is sine, cosine, or tangent? So you look at this chart. Is secant theta equal to something that has sine, cosine, or tangent in it? One over cosine. I'm going to change secant theta into one over cosine theta. And I kept sine theta, so sine theta. Now, if I did that and I multiply them together, did we learn how to multiply fractions at some point? I hope so. You multiply straight across. I get sine theta over cosine theta. Now my goal is to have one trigonometric ratio or number. Sine theta over cosine theta is equal to one trigonometric. What is that? Tangent, tangent theta. So we just manipulated this using these identities and substitution until it equals one thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll do a few more of these. Number two, cosine theta times tangent theta. Let's try and see if we can get it down to just cosines and sines. So can we change tangent into something that has cosines and sines? What's well, tangent equals? Sine theta over cosine theta. So let's do that. Let's say cosine theta multiplied by sine theta over cosine theta. And that first cosine is over 1. Uh, we multiply straight across, and we multiply straight across. I'm about to do it. Here we go. Here we go. I uh, multiply straight across. Okay. What can I do now? I can cancel out cosines. And I have left over just sine theta. One trigonometric ratio. <laughs> Number three. I've got tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta. Anytime I have squares, especially with plus or minus signs, I'm going to start looking at these Pythagorean identities. In those Pythagorean identities, do I have any identities that have tangents and secants? Oh, the middle one, right? Can I manipulate this middle one so that it says tangent squared subtract secant squared? How can I move stuff around in this equation so it says tangent squared subtract secant squared? And then an equal sign. What could I do to this equation? 
What do you think, too? Subtract secant from both sides. Okay, so then I will have 1 plus tangent squared theta subtract secant squared theta equals 0. I want this side to say only tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta. What could I do? So it only says tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta. understand what I'm saying? What can I do so it only says this? What can I do so it only says that on the side of the equation? No, I want it to say, I want it to say tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta. If I subtract the one, Now I'll have tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta equals negative 1. So my question for number 3 is what does tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta equal? Negative 1 is the answer. Is that way too confusing? Because I got another way to do it. I don't know. Should we do it another way? Yeah. It's still going to give me the same answer. Let's do it a different way. What tangent squared theta equal to here? What tangent squared theta equal to? This is tangent theta. What tangent squared theta equal to? Sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. So if I write this as sine squared theta over cosine squared theta, what's secant squared theta equal to up here? 1 over cosine squared theta. I'm, I now have fractions. How do I subtract fractions? Common denominator. Do I have a common denominator? Okay, so I put this over the common denominator. What do I have on top? Sine squared theta minus 1. <coughs> so this is going to be the same kind of word now. I'm going to have to go up here and figure out how I can make this say sine squared theta minus 1. How can I make this one say sine squared theta minus 1? I have to move the 1 over. And what will I do with the cosine squared? <coughs> I don't know if we're not talking if we have no idea how to do pre-algebra. I'm hoping we're just not talking. How do you... Get rid of cosine squared on this side of the equation and put it over here. How do you get rid of it? You subtract it. So this will be minus cosine squared over here. So sine squared theta minus 1 is equal to negative cosine squared theta. And then I have another step. So it's negative cosine squared theta over positive cosine squared theta. What happens to the cosine squared theta? They cancel, and what do we get? Negative 1. Same answer. There's multiple ways of doing these. The problem is you're going to have to do it on your own without me saying, this is what you should do. So look at the next one. We need to do 1 minus cosine squared theta. Where do you think we should look? Identities have names. Which identities should we look at for 1 minus cosine squared theta? The Pythagorean theorem one. The very first Pythagorean identity says sine squared theta plus cosine theta squared theta equals 1. If I use that one, I'm just going to rewrite that one over here so I don't have to keep going up and down.
If I use this one, how can I make it say 1 minus cosine squared theta? How can I make this equation have 1 minus cosine squared theta on one side of it? Just kidding. Okay. I want this equation on one of the sides to say 1 minus cosine squared theta. Subtract what? Subtract cosine squared theta. That will cancel it out there. Bring down sine squared theta. Bring down my equal sign. I have 1 minus cosine squared theta. So the question is, what does 1 minus cosine squared theta equal? Sine squared theta is my answer. They're equivalent. <coughs> Number five. <coughs> there is not an identity that says 1 minus cosine theta. There's an identity that we just did had 1 minus cosine squared theta. There's not a 1 minus cosine theta. So there may be a case where you actually have to multiply this together first. So we're multiplying a binomial times a binomial. That is um, like the FOIL method. So first is 1, outer is plus cosine theta, inner is minus cosine theta, last is minus cosine squared theta. Multiply those together, what happens to the inside two terms? They cancel, so we have 1 minus cosine squared theta. What does 1 minus cosine squared theta equal? We just did it. Okay, look at number seven. I'm going to skip six because it's similar. Number seven, when you have fractions like that, you may not want them to be fractions. So we might want to write one over sine squared as cosecant squared. Uh, this is a, a. You can write theta as well. And I might not want 1 over tangent. I might want to write it as cotangent squared theta. And then you look at your Pythagorean um, identities. And there is an identity that has cotangent and cosecant together. It's 1 plus cotangent equals cosecant. So I can rearrange this one so it says cosecant squared theta, take away cotangent squared theta. I can rearrange this one by subtracting the cotangent. So this answer is what? Okay, <laughs> number eight. Number eight, there's multiple different ways of doing number eight. And I may want to um, first just say, well, I don't want this to be tangent. I want to write it with sines and cosines. So I'm going to have one minus. On top, I'm going to have sine squared theta. But underneath, instead of tangent, that's the same thing as sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. <coughs> So here, instead of dividing by a fraction, so divided by a number, we could do what? Multiply by its reciprocal. So now I'm going to have 1 minus, I'm going to have sine squared theta, but instead of dividing by this pink one, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal. So I'm going to flip it and multiply by cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. which allows the sines to cancel, we get 1 minus cosine squared theta. And for some reason, I feel like I've heard that twice already. What does 1 minus cosine squared theta equal? Number 4, number 5, what's it equal? Sine squared theta. Okay, so you're going to have to try stuff. 
and it's going to be challenging because there isn't like, this is the way you always do it. Um, there is a worksheet, which I'm currently misplaced somewhere up here. <coughs> Look like this. You're going to do numbers one to ten on the worksheet. challenging session. 